Hey there everybody, I am here to Alex Blaine and then install an integrated engineering cold air intake kit for my Mark 5 GTI. I'll be installing it on an FSI today. Integrated engineering does market this as a drop-in solution, so we shouldn't need any additional hardware, and this will replace the factory engine cover and air filter. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. You're not going to need any out of the ordinary tools for this job, but I would suggest some long slender pliers to get the hose clamp on the turbo inlet side towards the bottom. That's probably the hardest part of this job. I'm following along with Integrated Engineering's PDF document. I'll provide a link in the description to that. All right, so now we can open up our hood and get started. First thing to do on the list is to disconnect the mass airflow sensor connector. That's just a pinch pull kind of connector. And you can pull the cable off of the noise pipe and just move it over to the side. Once that's out of the way, you can undo the two clips holding the inlet pipe onto the intake. Pretty easy. They'll make a pretty pronounced sound when they come off. And while the factory engine cover is still on, we might as well remove the two T20s holding the mass airflow sensor into the cover. And you will need to pull with a decent amount of force if this hasn't been removed in a long time to get it out. It may feel like you're breaking it, but you aren't. As long as the metal and the plastic on both sides are intact, you should be fine. Make sure you remember how it's oriented. Usually the metal side is facing up and the plastic side is facing down. You can then flip flop over to the other side of the engine cover where the two T20 bolts are holding the air ducting onto the hose for the intake. You can take those off. Then give the bellow looking pipe a tug and just leave it on top of the duct. Now it's time for your engine cover to come off. You will need to pull probably pretty hard on this, especially given the age of this generation in the year 2020. But uh, eventually, all of those grommets should come off, or they'll stay on the mounts, and you'll have to pull them off later, which isn't that fun. Now that that bulky piece of crap is out of the way, you can remove the rest of the intake ducting at the front of the engine bay. It's attached with two T25s, and they're kind of tucked up in the front there. You'll have to lean over a little bit to see them properly. Now that the factory intake is gone, we're going to go ahead and tackle the hardest part of the job, which is the hose clamp at the bottom of that little turbo inlet hose. Uh, you will need to squeeze it a decent bit in order to loosen it. I would just suggest taking the clamp and moving it once you get it loosened as far up the pipe as possible. And then you're going to have to use a decent amount of force to get that pipe off. A lot of tugging, a lot of pulling, a lot of twisting. Just be very careful not to break any of the plastic that's been there for so many years. Time to start putting the new intake on. We can take the hose with three holes and the smallest hose clamp that comes in the kit and put that on the long side. That's where it installs down into the turbo. Now it's time to do a little bit of fabrication, I mean a uh, configuration of the finished hose piece. All you gotta do there is flip it upside down from how it would be installed, and then flip it sideways. Okay, that's too confusing. Um, point being, look at a document for this. All you gotta do is take a washer and an 11 millimeter nut and install it into that hook piece where it comes around near the high pressure fuel pump. The thread on the other side of that rubber piece will eventually go into the top of the vacuum pump. Anyways, we can take the second smallest hose clamp now and slide it over the gooseneck piece near the oil filler uh, where the turbo is. And then you can slide the finished piece into the gooseneck piece. Once that's pretty snug in there, you can take the threaded rubber piece and thread it through that hook on the top of the vacuum pump. Then take the other 11 millimeter and washer and stick it on the other side. So for now, I just pushed this hose all the way up. This little rib is where the hose clamp is gonna sit. And then right here, these are both just finger tight and that's what it should look like. Rubber in the middle, bolts on either side. So now we're gonna put the mass airflow sensor back in to this new intake. 
Uh, the first thing that we need to make sure that we're doing correctly is that we're putting the mass airflow sensor in with the metal side up. Uh, this piece faces the bottom. There were originally some torque screws that went into uh, the original engine cover. Um, the thread is a little bit different. Uh, they give you new bolts. They are a different size. I believe this is a 2 millimeter Allen, um, but it's an Allen instead of a Torx. And the thread depth is different as well. So just make sure that you're using the new bolts and that you're putting it in with the metal side up. And you should be all set. This will require a little bit of pressure, so um, be gentle, use both your hands, just be gradual. It should go in. There you go. And suddenly, a fork in the road appears. Hopefully the only one. The third outlet, the small one towards the left, is where your diverter valve relocation hose goes. If you haven't done that yet, in my case I haven't, you can take the little black block off piece that comes in this kit, push it in there, and then use the squeeze clamp to tighten it down. I ended up using a regular hose clamp as a holdover for now since I didn't have squeeze clamp pliers. Now take a little gander at the two mounting points near the battery and fuse box that will hold the shroud that the velocity stack will go onto. There will be a little bracket with two additional engine mounts. That's what's going to sit there. You can then mount the bracket to the shroud with the two hex nuts, they're 10 millimeters, facing the bottom, and the Torx slash Allen, I can't remember which, bolts facing the top. You will need to tighten these down as once you get them into the engine bay, you won't be able to tighten them any further. Now all you gotta do to get that shroud in there is just push down on the mounting points and you'll just hear the rubber seat in place. Then you can take the weather stripping that comes with the kit and push it firmly down onto the outer edge of the shroud so that it lines up with your hood when you close it. Feel free to test closing and opening your hood a few times before continuing with the rest of the install. Now you can take the cool looking velocity stack with the largest hose clamp, slide it onto the stack, and then press it into the shroud. The filter, not the hose clamp, dang it. And finally, before you start tightening everything down, the two remaining hose clamps, you know where they go based on size, will slide into the finished piece and the other piece. Y you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here goes the cold start. And that, my friends, is what my engine sounds like now. I like it. It's actually a lot louder than I was thinking, but in a good way, not too loud. If you guys enjoyed this DIY put together mod thing, uh, feel free to give the video a like, a comment, subscribe, whatever you want. And I will see you all in future videos. Bye bye!